Hello Green Stylers, Cynthia here, and today we will be sewing the Green Style Flare Leggings together. Follow along with me to make your very own adult or youth flare leggings. Let's take a look at the pieces you'll need to cut to make your flare leggings. First off is the front piece. You'll need to cut two of these as mirror images. You can see I'm preparing for a pocket. Right here is the pocket cut line. If you're not doing a pocket, your piece will go all the way up like this, and that will be filled in. Pay close attention to which waistband cut line that you use. The waistband cut line that you cut on this front piece needs to correspond with the waistband of your choice, so read the pattern piece very carefully. You can also trace this pocket marking line to the wrong side or both sides of your piece. If you trace it onto the right side, that can help you top stitch your pocket in place. Next up is the back piece. If you'll be using the gusset, you'll be cutting along the gusset cut line right about here and you'll also need to cut two gusset pieces. Make sure you cut the appropriate waistband cut line on the top of your back piece as well. If adding pockets to your flare leggings, you'll need to cut two of the pocket pieces, just like this. The pocket piece also has a top cut line that needs to match the waistband of your choice. If you're making the crossover V waistband, you will cut one of this crossover V waistband piece and it will look just like this. My cotton French terry likes to curl on the edges. The other waistband I'll show in this video is the contoured waistband. If you are making the contoured waistband, you'll cut two of the liner pieces out of lining fabric and then you'll cut two of the main pieces out of main fabric. I'm using the same fabric for both. The reason we have lining pieces is because the liner piece is a little bit shorter. So when we attach the liner to the main, what'll happen is the liner will pull some of that main in toward the inside of the pant. That'll ensure that the liner piece doesn't show on the outside while you're wearing them. To add the gusset, you'll take your two gusset pieces and baste them with wrong sides together. I am actually using some wash away adhesive tape to hold mine together instead of basting. Make sure you cut the bottom of that back crotch seam using the gusset cut line and then go ahead and pin that gusset piece in place just like so. We're going to stitch with a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once attached, the gusset piece will look like this right along the bottom edge of your back crotch seam. And now we can top stitch right along here. I want to point out to make sure your top stitching does not go above the top of the gusset. Push the seam away from the gusset and toward the pants. And then you can use a zigzag, twin needle, or cover stitch to top stitch right on the pant side of that seam. I started my stitch at the very bottom of the gusset and I'm working my way up. When you begin stitching at the very edge of the fabric like that, make sure you hold those thread tails. It helps to make sure that the sewing machine doesn't eat your fabric. And then when you get to the top, just make sure you don't stitch past the top edge of that gusset. Do a back stitch to lock it in place and it will look like this. To make the pockets, we'll begin by finishing the front edge of the pocket opening. And it's this edge of the front piece right here. You can see that little notch is part of your cutting and you're gonna use that to fold back toward the wrong side, the front edge of that pocket opening. And you'll see how that little notch perfectly folds along the side of the piece. So we'll fold that in and give it a nice press and then take it over to top stitch it closed. You can use your cover stitch, zigzag, or twin needle. And if you've ever watched me working and I'm using my cover stitch to top stitch straight edges or anything that's not in the round, you may notice these little pieces of fabric hanging off the edge of my cover stitch. And that is just an extra little inch of fabric that helps keep those stitches from falling out until they're locked in place with another seam. To remove, pull the threads from in front of the thread bar, then pull the threads from under the needle and then clip them off and then pull the fabric back into the left 
to lock in those stitches. Here we have a nice double line of stitches and then finished on the inside as well. Moving on to a different pair of pants once we have that edge finished. And I'll show you this edge is stitched on the outside and finished on the inside as well. We are going to add that pocket piece. I've marked the outside and the inside of the fabric with the pocket placement marking off of the pattern piece. And what we're gonna do is take that pocket piece and we're gonna put the right side of the pocket onto the wrong side of the front piece. And we can line it up at the top and side edges and use that pocket placement marking to help you guide it. We'll pin it in place along the edges of the front piece. We're gonna be basting along here. And we're also going to be top stitching along the edges of that pocket piece. And so we're gonna pin the pocket in place on the right side of the fabric and take it over to our machines. I'll be using two machines for these steps, but you can do both steps on the sewing machine if you don't have a cover stitch. We'll start by basting the top and side edge of the pocket to the pant using a basting stitch, which is a straight stitch set at the longest stitch length. If you make your basting stitches within the seam allowance and pretty close to the edge, then you won't even have to remove them later. They'll be hidden inside the seam. Now it's basted on the sides. We're going to top stitch to finish the inside curved edge of the pocket. If you're really good at using your fingers to follow that curved edge, you can go without marking the front of your pants, but I always find that tricky and somehow my curve never looks quite right. This is why I find it really helpful to use that placement marking from the pattern piece and make it on the outside of the pant. I'll just follow that line and stitch right along the inside of it and my curve always looks nice and curvy and it follows just along the edge of the pocket without falling off of the pocket. Once the pockets are in place, we will attach the front and back pant pieces along this long side seam. So bring over one front and one back and lay them both side up on your table and then flip one on top of the other and align them along this long edge. Pin in place. Repeat for the other front and back piece. You can use a stretch stitch on your sewing machine or your serger in a 3 8 inch seam allowance here. I didn't show pinning both legs, but you definitely want to pin both legs and now we're stitching up both side seams at the same time. And here's where we are now. We have a one leg stitched with the front and back together. Here are the two crotch seams. We've got our pocket installed. And if you'd like, you can press that side seam at this point. It's easiest because the leg is wide open. Lay it with the right side up on the table and then bring your other leg over and you're gonna lay it with right side down so that the right sides are together. We're gonna align the two French front crotch seams together and the two back crotch seams together and pin them in place. We'll stitch right along here with a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once that is done, it'll look just like this and you'll have one big pant piece. Now we'll pin up that inseam. Grab one of the pant legs by the side seam and lift up the whole thing and then you'll have the inseam edges pretty much aligned with right sides together. Go ahead and pin or clip that entire inseam, making sure to match up the raw edges at the bottom of the legs and also match up the edges of those crotch seams. Mm -hmm. 
stitch up that entire inseam starting at the bottom of one leg, going up all the way through the crotch seam and ending at the bottom of the other pant leg. Use a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'll show you two waistbands in this video, the contoured waistband which is next and then later on the crossover V waistband. If you're making the solid V waistband, you can continue here for instructions on constructing it, then use the crossover V instructions for attaching it. But don't worry, I'll let you know exactly when and where to skip ahead. We'll begin with two sets of waistband pieces, the lining or inner pieces and the main or outer pieces. Take those pieces and pair them together along the short side seams and with right sides together, pin those side seams. If you're doing the full V, just remember that the inner front and inner back that you pair together are gonna to be different shapes, and the outer front and outer back that you pair together will be different shapes from each other. Once you have all of those side seams pinned or clipped, you'll stitch them with a stretch stitcher serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I usually prefer to use my sewing machine for this step, and as you can see, I'm using stitch number six, which is also called the lightning bolt stitch. Another really good option here is the triple straight stitch. And the reason I do that is because then those side seams can be ironed open, and I really like the flat feel that it gives on the side seam of the waistband when you're wearing it. Now that the side seams are ironed open, we'll attach the two waistbands together at the top seam. So take one of the waistband pieces and turn it right side out. That piece, you'll slip it inside of the other waistband. At this point, it doesn't really matter which one goes inside or out, as long as the two waistbands are right sides together. Line them up at the side seams and pin or clip them together all along the top edge. Now we'll stitch all along that top edge using a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And if you feel like you need some additional support to the top of your waistband, you can stitch some flat clear elastic into that seam. Just make sure you stitch it to the main or outer fabric side of that seam. And here's a little technique tip for those of you using a serger for the first time or still learning to use your serger. When you serge onto the fabric, you're not immediately at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You can see right there the beginning of my stitch. It's not a 3 8 seam allowance until I get about to this point right here. So what I wanna do is when I get to my beginning point, I'm gonna keep stitching straight toward that 3 8 inch seam allowance and stitch off the beginning of my stitches. Then when I get to that point where I'm fully 3 8 inch seam allowance, I'll turn off my knife and keep stitching for about an inch farther. And that way I get a smooth and straight seam allowance. And here's a good look at how the liner or inner waistband differs from the outer or main waistband. I am using the same fabric on both as you can see. So once I turn them right side out, it might be a little difficult to distinguish. So what I'm gonna do is mark on the outside of the fabric using my little blue painter's tape um, so I can know very easily which is the liner or inner and which is the main or outer. This is important when you go to attach your waistband to the pants. You wanna make sure you know which is which. Now let's turn the whole thing right side out and align those raw edges at the bottom. If 
If making the full V waistband, you can now skip ahead to my instructions on attaching the crossover waistband. The technique is exactly the same. Bring over your pants with wrong side out, and then we're going to place the waistband inside of the pant, but make sure that the main or outer waistband is facing outward toward the pant before you slip it inside. So here I have my little tape marking, so I know that the main part of my waistband is going to be touching the pants. Pin that waistband to the pant. You'll be aligning three raw edges. The front and back center crotch seams on the pants match up with the front and back notches on the waistbands. And line up the side seams of the pants with the side seams of the waistband. Attach the waistband to the pants using a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. But as you know, I always based my waistbands on first. Do not stretch the fabric on the pants at all. Instead, I think of it more as pressing it so that it lays flat versus pulling on the waistband. Turn everything right side out and then you can check to make sure that your waistband looks good. No bubbles, no holes where any of the layers of the fabric fell out of your stitch. And here I want to show you how that difference between the main and the liner works. If you look at the very top of the waistband on the outer, it's nice and smooth. You don't see a seam, but when you look on the inside, the seam is rolled toward the inside just a little bit. It makes the outside of the pants look really nice. To make the crossover V waistband, we start with this one crossover V waistband piece. I like to begin by ironing it in half with wrong sides touching so I have a nice crisp top edge of my waistband. Lay it out on the table folded just like this and we're going to fold it over so that the two ends meet in the center. Pay close attention to these points right here. Those are the two points that are going to meet and overlap to create the front point of your V. So there we've lined up those two points. We're going to pin the front edges of that waistband right where all the pieces overlap. And once we have these front edges pinned from the point to the center to the other point, we'll take it over to our sewing machine and baste those front edges. We'll start here, go all the way down, and then end right at the other point, which is facing towards the inside of the waistband. Use a basting stitch on your sewing machine for this step. When you get to the front center point, you can put your needle down and lift your foot to make that turn. Be sure you're checking all of those layers. It's four layers that you're basting together, so just make sure everything is staying aligned and that you're catching all four layers. All right, and that's it. Our V crossover waistband is constructed. Wasn't that easy? Now we are going to attach it to the pants. If you're making the full V waistband, you can join us here and follow these instructions. You attach the full V waistband in just the same way as the crossover V. So bring over your pants and we are going to attach them with the pants right side out and with the V waistband with the right side facing in. Find the center back of the waistband. It's easier to find the center back at this point before we attach anything to the pant. And we're going to then locate the very front point of the waistband and the front center crotch seam at the top of the pants. Align those top edges and we're just going to pin right there at the very center. 
Again, these are with right sides together. That is more important if you're doing the full V waistband. The crossover V should look about the same on both sides. Now we're gonna bring this over to our sewing machine and we are going to put the pant and waistband under the needle so that that center point is exactly aligned with the needle and we're gonna drop it down at exactly 3 8 of an inch. It can be tricky to see what you're doing so stick your face <laughs> right up close if you need to. Take your time. I like to use the pin that's sticking out to help guide me so that I can see exactly where that spot is. But once you get it aligned, drop your needle down and then you can take your pin out. And then you can lift your foot and align the raw edges of the waistband with the raw edges of the pant and just pivot and rotate everything so that you can then stitch a straight line. Now from that point, we're gonna start stitching using a straight stitch. You can do a back stitch to lock, but be very careful that you only go back to the starting point, don't go beyond. Stitch about two inches and again back stitch to lock your stitches. Make sure that you are staying exactly on that 3 8 inch seam allowance line. I forgot to show you a close up of how it looks so far, but here's a quick freeze frame. You can see my stitch going from the center and upward. To prepare to stitch up the other side of the V, we'll first need to adjust the bulk of the fabric on the pants. It's a lot of fabric and you just need to move it around to make sure everything's going to be nice and flat underneath as you stitch. You can either continue stitching the front of the waistband like I am um, and switch to the other side of the needle or you can flip everything over and stitch from the inside. I like to see it on the waistband side, so I'll be stitching a little awkwardly on the other side of my needle, but the whole process can be a little awkward. You just gotta figure out which is less awkward for you. Um, what you wanna do is get the center point back exactly under the needle, and you're gonna drop your needle into the spot where you first began, making sure once again that all of those raw edges are aligned. Again, carefully back stitching to that center spot and stitch a couple of inches using a straight stitch and then lock your stitches once again. Check your V, make sure that it looks how you like it. Pull the waistband up and make sure that front point looks good. At this point, you can pull out those stitches and restitch it. I have done that many, many, many times, so don't feel badly if you have to try it a few times. Um, it's a learning curve, but once you're happy with it, find that back point, which we marked earlier with a clip, and pin it to the back center of the pant. You can add some more clips all along the back edge. I would recommend doing that because you do need to stretch the waistband a bit in order to attach it to the pants. We'll stitch the remainder of the waistband to the pant using a stretch stitch or serger and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I will be switching to a basting stitch because I like to attach waistbands and neckbands with a basting stitch first. Check it out and make sure I'm happy with everything and then I will go back and stitch with a stretch stitch or serger. If you're using a sewing machine, you'll begin stitching right where you left off. Make sure that you lock your stitches at the beginning and the end. If you're using a serger, you can actually serge on at that center front point and go all the way around and then serge off again at the center front point, leaving your straight stitches intact to create that beautiful V. It's a good thing I basted. Everyone makes mistakes, so I will go back and fix this before using my stretch stitch to finish this waistband. And finally, hemming those pant legs. There's a one inch hem allowance included in the pattern. I like to draw a line two inches away from that raw edge using my acrylic ruler, and that will help guide me when I turn up that raw edge.
Now you'll simply bring the raw edge to the line and voila, you have a one inch hem. Give it a nice press so that you have a beautiful bottom edge to your pants. If you'd like to add some pins or clips for added security, you can do so at this point, but if you used spray starch and have a nice pressed edge there, you probably don't even need them. And here's a little pro tip for fitting. Before you stitch this hem in place, now is a good time to have your model try on the pants. And once everyone is satisfied exactly where that hem hits on the foot or on the shoe, top stitch to finish those off using a cover stitch, twin needle, or a zigzag stitch. And that's it, you are done. After you have that pant beautifully hemmed, put on those green style flare leggings and strut your stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this sewing tutorial. Please let me know in the comments and share your green style flare leggings on social media. Be sure to use the hashtag so we can find you, hashtag GS flare leggings, hashtag GS flares, or for the youth version, hashtag GS youth flares. I can't wait to see all of your amazing creations. Happy sewing from all of us at Greenstyle.